Somebody shot, they still shoot, so please do not make that area. Yeah, we don't know. Dad, that's the same place we just went caught the other car. Yep. But a dude got shot 14 times. Earlier in the shift, Dan and I got a uh, shooting at that same apartment complex. Keep your head on the swivel. We do go on these dangerous scenes and the projects in New Orleans. One dude told me, why, why the F you moving so slow? I should shoot you myself. What? Yeah. Damn. So Dan is going to grab his little funky yeah, ass vest. I'm going to go in there like a soldier. Summertime in the war. So the code for scene is safe. NOPD's got some units there. All right, good. I put on a vest because if something were to happen or there was some sort of retaliation for that event while we were there, I mean, we're all just kind of like sitting ducks. Back. We're going to load them up. Maybe we got them. What hurts the worst right now? Back in the leg. Back in the leg, type. All right. Hold, hold up for one moment. Let me see. Did you see this thing down here? You wrapped that? Was it bleeding a lot? Give me some light. Wait, 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 wait. Well, we got to get him up. We got to get him up, Sadat. Looks like he has one to his back and his leg. Those are injuries that can ultimately become more detrimental as time passes. One, two, three. There you go. Plus, for all the chaos, it was just best just to get him out of there. Three and three right here. All right, you got you, man. You want to do it? All right, come on. All right, I'm going to set you up. Oh, look, he has an uh, under his armpit. It's also. a through. It looked like it was a through. Right. through. You allergic to anything? Any drugs or alcohol tonight? Yeah. What? That's it? Xanax? Any alcohol with it? Exactly. Just a daiquiri? Dude, this is some oxygen. Just breathe. Just check his pressure and let's go. I got 120 systolic. We good. We all can do, man. Let's go. Josh, you're going to feel a big stick in your arm. Don't move, OK? One, two, three. Josh, keep your eyes open. Stay awake from it. That's because you're shot in it. He had been shot to his right lower leg that had a pretty significant hole that was just checking to see if he had any major bleeding from the bone. He can have more bleeding with a long bone fracture than he can have just with a soft tissue injury. Did you see who shot you? Did you, did you hear the gun? Yeah. You know that cat that was shot out there earlier today? You didn't know him, don't know nothing about that? I transported him too. You know anything about that shooting that happened earlier that you want to tell me, you make sure you tell the police, you hear? It's awfully coincidental that this happened. I was just out there three hours for the same thing. This stuff's got to stop. You know it. Anything we can do to stop the violence like that in these communities, I mean, that's all of our jobs, down to the people that live there. It can be his brother, or his daddy, or his mom, or anybody that could be the next victim of this. It, there's no you know, uh, racial divide. There's no gender divide. This stuff affects everybody. So if, if we don't all step up and stop this, it's never going to get better. Boy, a big ass hole in his back. And a big ass hole in his leg. I didn't even see the leg. Did you unwrap it? I could have dropped this pin down in the hole in his leg. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know what it's doing, man. Kind of angled up behind you because I knew you had the vest on. <laughs> well, they could still got you on like the sides a little bit. Whatever well, was poking out around me. I've been slimming up, dude, so I could actually line up with you. Well, you maybe know, you were just convert. sidestepping. You're standing sideways behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-two, 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 twenty-nine, sixty-two, fifteen. 32, 32, 32, 29, 62, 15. Male and female, both shot. 15, I'm in right for two lanes. We get a call for a double 34S. We got a male and a female victim that's been shot. 32, 34, Detura, 2347. Looks like PD's on scene up there. 62, 15, I'm on scene, and a PD's on scene. We have a drive up at um, UH. Been shot, female been shot. You got a victim? They got a female shot, just drove up at UH. I'm looking for a scene, and I'm looking at all these houses to see if he crawled somewhere or something. Dispatcher's telling us about a female victim just pulled up at the trauma center. So we're looking for one victim. I have a gentilia poison, 3083. Somebody's shooting at us. All of a sudden, gunfire erupts. We jump in our vehicles and re-roll out. All operations go to time. Make sure y'all let uh, FD know to get shots fired in the area and not to go on scene. What channel PD's on? Every channel 4. 
I see the police racing towards the gunfire to try and secure the scene, putting themselves in harm's way to keep us safe. It's hard not to admire their courage. In 16 years, I've never had that happen. It uh, makes you realize how vulnerable you really are. All right, they're giving a code four right now. Once more police got on scene and secured it, we rolled in. There's somebody in here? Patient contact and actually found a male victim that had been shot. Sir, are you injured? I just got hit in the ear. You got hit in the ear? You got shrapnel in your head. What is that? That piece is a bullet. Piece is a bullet in your head here, in your neck here, in your ear. <clears throat> He was definitely very angry and upset, understandable, considering the situation. Want to get on a stretcher, bed? Yeah, 3232 is going to be transport. You can clear the second year. We are going to take him to the trauma center just in case something has gone deeper into his neck. We see life change in a matter of seconds every day, but you don't ever think that it could be your life changing within seconds. It just kind of brings you back to reality of how dangerous that job really is. Definitely get the hair on the back of your neck standing up when you get out of your unit and you hear gunfire. It was close. <laughs> it was way too close for comfort. Have a fire rescue. We have fire in the back of storage. Fire in the back storage? Yes, ma'am. It's fire in the back storage, ma'am. Is everyone out of the building? No, no, not yet. Come in, guys. Get everyone out of the building. I've got help on the way, OK? Yes, ma'am. They're on their way. Thank you. Rescue 4, what's your location? We're all over. If you've got a call with 10, we'll be able to pick it up. Acknowledge. Tell me what we got, kid. Engine 10, 16, Ooh. 18, and Rescue 4, we have a single alarm structure fire. Rescue 4, copy. Working fire. I don't see nothing yet. Just got dispatched to a working structure fire. Just heard on the radio that uh, they've got uh, fire through the roof and heavy smoke conditions, and they've already called for a second alarm. Second alarm means it. The situation has become too large, and life endangerment is so great that they're going to need the extra hands. There is smoke, though, so it is working fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that right there, Billy. Yep. I see it. Oh, yeah, it's cooking, kid. At this point in time, the structure is heavily involved in fire and actually pretty much blacked out. Yeah, come on, get dressed. Let's do it. Truck 13, command. Command on. Just an FYI, the soles about to get a lot larger up here. Woo, we're getting some plane now. And there's a possibility to secure another water source. The Bravo Charlie corner is about to light off. Copy. Everyone make it out of the building. 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 Everyone too deep because of the conditions. So we back out until we can get it knocked down a little bit more. David, engine four is set up with a full house hook up here. OK. Engine 12 is going to lay from engine four down the oh, back perfect. side of okay. water. Right? Oh, perfect. That's what they're yeah. working on right okay. now. Because of the construction of this building, we know that it won't take much heat and flame for this building to collapse. Look at the window. You see the window? If you go into defensive mode, these firefighters know that in defensive mode, we don't make entry into the building, and we're going to fight this fire from the outside. Uh, I just had a flare up on the Alpha Bravo corner. Copy that. We've got uh, heavy fire here at the front. We're going to have to get some hand lines in through the front windows. Let's get some lines on that. Woo! How I land now? Right here, kid. Right here. Rescue forward command. Has been cut to the entire building. Engine 10 to command. Come on, boss. Command, we've got about a 200 pound propane tank and an exchange cage on the side over here. Flames are getting pretty close. 
copy that. Squirt water on it. We need to keep a steady stream of water on these propane tanks to keep them cool. Because if these things heat up and light off, then they're going to take off like missiles. They're going to throw some shrapnel around, and they're going to end up causing us some serious issues. Command to County 32. Want to get some handlines pulled? We've got uh, propane tanks over there I'm a little worried about. Don't get too close. Anytime you get a building of this size and you get partial collapses, it's extremely difficult to get these fires put out. It can be frustrating sometimes, but you just have to tuck that away and focus in on what your goals are and just meet those goals one by one. Billy, get in here with your life. Right here. Hey, hey. Right here. Look. Just hit that wall. Right where you're at, right next to you. You know, as an incident commander, you take pride in seeing these guys bringing it all together, being able to take this chaotic, madhouse situation, bringing some kind of order to it. Here's your water. We were able to walk away without anybody being injured, and everybody got to go home to their families the next morning. Bro, it's freaking hot. It it's is hot, man. It's super I'm, hot. I'm like dehydrated. I'm dying. Right now. Well, that's a total loss. No doubt about that. Because that thing was getting it. Well, I mean, there wasn't a window without fire coming out of it when right. we first got there. I'm not kidding you. When we turned around to go out, and there was light coming in, I could see your silhouette. You're smoking like a campfire. I'm like, holy crap, it's too hot here, man. We're going to just ignite. 62 40s on scene. Hello, guys. What's going on? Got two pages here. OK. Hello. You were driving, babe? Yeah. OK. You didn't lose consciousness, huh? You been awake all the while? Yeah. Any trouble Hello. breathing? Hello. Where you got pain at? Hello. Where it's at, right here? Yeah. Might have a clavicle fracture up here. Collarbone might have been fractured. She was also complaining of a lot of pain in her ear. Her airbag had deployed. Those things go off, they're pretty loud. And she knew person, place, time, and thing. Oh. You could have significant hidden injuries when you have a motor vehicle collision. So we were taking every precaution. Let me take a look in your ear right there, see what's going on in your ear. It's breathing like hell. OK. Oh. I'm going to put you in a little sling now, OK? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my ear. OK. Oh. And we started our patient care when all of a sudden a male stepped in the side door of the ambulance and identified himself as her son. Yeah, yep. Okay. All right. All right, hey, let's look. Try not to get our blood pressure up, okay? Don't tell me nothing about my mother. All of a sudden, this guy, the patient's son, just lost it. Get off of him! Someone hit their emergency button. Immediate response is fear. Are my coworkers okay? Is my family okay? Because if somebody hits that button, all hell's breaking loose. We responded to a motor vehicle collision with two elderly ladies. We were treating him and everything was going good when all of a sudden her son entered the truck, was yelling at her and cussing her and a pushing match started and the next thing you know, we had our hands full. Yeah, 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 I'm trying to me, man. All right, PD's here, call four. All right, it's call four. They said, who was that? That was Bouvier. Officer, I'm the deputy chief of EMS and I want that man booked for assault on the EMT. Man, he put his hand on me first. My mom and everybody. I asked you to step out of the unit. You failed to do so. Man, 
Once the gentleman had been escorted from the scene, we saw the patients we had to go take care of. You all right? We get back in the truck, and I was feeling a lot of pain in my shoulder. And my left hand was numb at the time. All right. We were kind of tussling a little bit. He swings me around, and there's a parked truck there. And I hit the truck with my shoulder. And as soon as I hit it, I felt the pain. I knew it was immediate pain. 6240, I got an injured employee. I need another truck out here. 3232, show us on scene. We pull up on scene. Half the police are there, half the fire department fleet is there, and half the EMS fleet is there. We are all there. Where's the crew? What's right going here. on? The guy grabbed him and bounced him up against the car right here. Yeah, He's right? He's complaining all his shoulder and all right here. I'm just going to put this as a precaution. Right. Where's the guy? He's uh, secure. He's got him in custody. OK, good. Right. So we taking Ted? Yeah, you're going to take Ted. You ready, Ted? Yeah. Immediately, I don't even care about the details of what happened. We need to make sure yeah, that cool. our family member is OK. All right, Ted. Don't punch me. You got a little mark right there. His clavicles feel fun. He feels symmetrical. He just hurts like a son. May have just man. got a little nerve issue going on. You got um, any so tingling in your hand? A little bit. OK. All right. His shoulder didn't appear to be dislocated. Doesn't mean it couldn't have been fractured. He was having a lot of pain. For him, it's going to be all about x-rays. You ready? Sure. Too late? Yep. All right, let's go. Is it Theodore? <laughs> it's wild. You know, when you go to something to help someone and you get attacked, I mean, we're the good guys. We're the guys that are supposed to be around to help everyone else, you know? So when we're taken out of the picture, that's a problem. Ted, he's a good employee. Tried to keep his cool. The guy just wanted to wanted to be uh, loud and fight. So, uh, you know, hopefully Ted will make out OK. And uh, I'm getting too old for this kind of stuff. <laughs> Safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Randomizer, <laughs> randomizer. You know, they're not dead. I can work with them.